Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking to you around the Azure Virtual WAN or, or the Azure VWAN you call it. So um, I have got a lab environment actually um, done for testing of Azure VWAN and I'm going to be walking you through the configuration side of things and how I configured that, the steps involved and etc. And I'll do a bit of testing at the end as well. So um, first of all, let me uh, give you a bit of explanation of what I have done so far. So I have created a virtual VVAN and I have created a hub network in it. And um, I have, what I have done, I have uh, created two um, home networks, one in Perth and one in Sydney. And it's got some um, IP addresses that's locally assigned to them. Um, and the IP range um, in Sydney, it's got a different IP range and I have connected those to the Azure VVAN. And I have got a Azure virtual network or as well in, in Australia East and I have connected that to the hub. So Azure VVAN hub um, is, is like a Microsoft managed um, hub environment or hub network. We provide the IP range for that, but it's, it's ideally meant to be managed by Microsoft. Um, so what it does basically is it propagates all the IP ranges uh, from the the ones from the networks that's connected to it, and then it manage uh, would it acts as a broker network for all the other networks. So I've got this um, up and running. I've got this working. So before I show you the connectivity tests, um, I'll show you how the configuration was done. So uh, let me first bring you to the uh, Azure portal. And um, so I have, I've got this um, Azure VVAN resource that I've created, um, which I'll show you the main activities in it. So uh, the main things in the configuration is I have enabled branch to branch connectivity. So you can, you can disable uh, branch to branch connectivity or you can enable branch to branch, but it needs to be in the same hub network. Um, at the moment, so during this GA features, it al only allows branch to branch connectivity between the hubs, uh, only within the same hubs, what I mean. So um, you, that's only configuration side of things you can do in there. And then we have VPN sites. So um, we have, um, I have created two VPN sites. Um, uh, the VPN, two VPN sites for me was the Perth and the Sydney, if you can remember, and they, they are my branch sites basically. And I have connected those to the hub network. So if you go to the hub, you can basically create and manage your hub networks in here. Um, I have created a hub network in the Australia East region and I have connected the, the two VPN sites to that. So if you go to the VPN sites, you will see that these two are the Perth and Sydney. I have connected those two and they are all connected and up and running. So if you look at the virtual network connections, I have added a virtual network connection to this same hub in Australia East. And the virtual network that I have got is, a, uh, is the virtual network uh, that I created for this. So I've got a test VM in here, which we can use for testing. And I have uh, a test VM in each one of those um, uh, branch sites as well. We'll do some uh, connectivity tests at, the, uh, at last. So what I specifically want to mention is um, um, the, the provisioning of the, the branch sites. So the Riverbed Perth and Riverbed Sydney side of things. I didn't create any of those. I mean. I, I created them, but I didn't create them um, create them uh, using like manual configuration or anything. I used the zero touch provisioning capabilities uh, built within the Riverbed um, appliances. So what I have done is I have got a Steelhead con uh, Connect Manager, and I have created two virtual appliances for these two regions, and I have de deployed those two virtual appliances into these two branch sites. Um, I've got one of them running Hyper-V and the other one's running VMware basically. So I downloaded those two ones. Uh, I'll show you how that's basically, um, how that's done in the um, Riverbed Steel Connect Manager. So what I have done is I've gone to the network design side of things and I've created two new sites in each, um, for each of those branch sites. So I'll point out the, to the Perth one and then what I have done is um, I haven't done any fancy stuff on the on the uh, Perth side of side side of things. I can do VLANing and side so, uh, so, uh, and other ex stuff etc. So, but I haven't touched any of those in here. 
what I have done is uh, in each one of those branch sites I have disabled the auto VPN so I, I'm not using auto VPN in any of those and uh, then we have uh, I have created zones for each of those so zones basically provides like what's the IP ranges that I'm going to be using in, in each one of those uh, networks so I've defined what the IP ranges that needs to be used in any, each one of these branches and that's all locked in and uh, then I then what I have done is I have downloaded and configured for each of those branches uh, the appliances so I have added a virtual record for the plants and in I have done the configuration for each one of those so this is the gateway IP address and this is the uplink so I have done that and then I've uh, generated the, the appliance image based on the flavor that you want I've, I've created one Hyper-V and one via VMware vSphere and um, I've downloaded that and upload and I've created the virtual appliance and then it will become once it becomes online with a internet connection it will go uh, green in here and say oh, it's online so once it's online, uh, what Steel Head Connect, uh, Steel Connect Manager uh, does is it it pushes the configuration into the appliance and then it it grabs all the um, the configuration and deploys it into the machine, uh, to the virtual appliance. And it's so that's that's what you call the zero touch provisioning. So we don't need to do any configuration on the appliance. And if you make any changes in here, that will push up push down all the configuration and um, and it will it will have everything um, um, pushed out uh, in terms of configuration and, and it, it is really really easy to manage so you can be managing your worldwide uh, distributed appliances in one single pane in here so once once you get the VM uh, once you got the virtual appliance up and running um, you go back um, and then you go back to the Azure side of things and you add your Azure subscription in here it will need a service principle for you to add uh, your subscription and um, once you add that you you will see if you have a virtual uh, vvan you will see that uh, vvan um, uh, added in here so it will detect that you got you, you just got a um, Azure vvan in here as well so once you do that what i have done is i have got uh, added those sites for instance if you have like if you have a site available then it will come and list in here uh, you need to assign those sites into the the events and then uh, click submit. So once you assign those, um, uh, once you assign those uh, sites into events, uh, it will automatically create those um, s create these IPsec tunnels, and you don't have to manage anything in in here. So they will come come in as records, and it will show the public IP address that they connect from. So all what you need to do is you need to associate those VPN sites to a new hub in um, in here. So if you go to the VPN sites, um, you will see new hub association, and then you associate uh, a VPN site into the into the hub, and that's that's it. So that's all the provisioning you do. So the configuration side of things is may is really really easy, and it's all um, GUI based. It's centrally managed. So that's that's being said. Uh, we'll do a quick um, we'll do some quick testing around um, uh, about the connectivity. So I'm I'm back in here to just to explain you the IP ranges. So what I'm going to be logging into is the Perth one of the Perth VMs, and I'm going to be connecting. I'm going to be checking the connectivity for the branch to branch, which means I'm going to be testing connectivity into the Sydney which will go to the Microsoft um, Azure VBAN hub and then it will come all the way back into the Sydney. So, so the IP address that I'm going to be uh, uh, that I'm going to be initiating the traffic is from 22.2 22 .2 IP address and all I'm going to be reaching is 24.2. So let's do a quick check. So here I am. So if I sorry, uh, so if I do IP config in here. So currently I'm in the Perth Perth server, which is the 22.2 .20, server. So if I if I do a ping to the Sydney branch, which is 24, let's do one. I can reach the reach the Sydney server, and it has a um, the latency of 106, which is fine, and. Uh, yeah, so that's that's pretty much um, that's pretty much that.
a connection. So we have we have got connectivity between branch to branch between uh, Perth and Sydney. So uh, if I do um, if I do a ping to the um, Azure VNet, which is uh, which has got 10.33 range, and I've got a test VM which is 10.33.0.4. I have got connected to connectivity to that VM as well, so which means I've got branch to branch to Azure connectivity as well, so which is again another feature in in Azure VBAN at the moment. So it is which is pretty cool. So all this configuration uh, was done using all this configuration was done using um, the Azure VBAN and the the river riverbed uh, um, the connection manager. So which is which is pretty good. All driven. Um, zero touch provisioning and um, all, all the technology use, used um, the Azure VBAN technology for the hub and um, hub and spoke connection and etc. Which is pretty good. So in terms of uh, monitoring, let's go and have a look what you can do for the monitoring bit. So in connection monitor, um, you can actually add uh, connect uh, connectivity monitor. So if you if you can see. Um, I have got here. I uh, have got connectivity. I have pointed two VMs to communicate each other and make uh, and give me the visibility of the connection. Um, as you can see here, it's um, the VM is consistently having a, uh, having some latency mentioned, and also it's it's the status of it is reachable. So we are having a latency at the moment, 60 around average, 55 milliseconds, and uh, and it's been constantly monitored every minute. So these are the uh, the VMs. So this is the VM source, and t the destination is the 22.20. .20. So you can see if I go in here, it's currently there's another VM in in Sydney which is currently unreachable. And if you look at uh, when it went down, and etc., you will see you will see starting from probably um, 6 uh, 6:30, 6:25, uh, it it went unavailable for some reason. Um, even I don't know what the reason is, but anyway, this is what sh this is what you're looking at, and the connection monitoring um, has given us visibility of wh why it, I mean when it was un made unavailable and etc. Um, so that's that, and the connection health monitors the hub monitor uh, hub health and and the VPN connect uh, VPN site health. So hub status is succeeded, gateway is succeeded, and a bit of monitoring on how much traffic being um, pushed out and pulled in. And again, the VPN sites and etc. Uh, that's pretty much the features that's currently generally available in Azure VBAN. And thanks for watching this video. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post in the comments.